Hello. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming to this uh, DockerCon 2020 session on developing containerized apps for Azure. My name is Paul Yuknovich. I'm one of the GPMs at Microsoft. My product team works on Azure development tools, especially for the cloud. And this is such an exciting day, starting with the keynote we saw earlier and um, all the sessions that we've seen up until now. You're seeing that collaboration that we've had between Docker, um, my team, and the bigger Microsoft team to bring together that better developer story for making modern cloud apps, um, for building apps a better way. And um, it's just so fun to be a part of this now, getting to show you um, a number of things that are coming together, including some sneak peeks that literally are just hot off the presses and we get to show you. So in this particular session, there's at least three things that I want to do with you today. First one, I'd like to go over our point of view on how containers really make modern development and modern cloud development a lot better. And what are the reasons, what are the approaches to think about as you do that? Secondly, there's a, a journey that many people are on to the cloud. And I want to show you a very easy way to get to the cloud. And then some of the things to think about as you progress to more stages. Third thing, um, being a tools team with a tools DNA, of course, we want to show you our tools. Um, there's a number of things we've done to make you just so productive, so fast, give you more power. Um, and we'll have some sneak peeks. This session is ultra heavy on demos. Um, we're not going to spend much time in PowerPoint at all. Um, and so I'm excited to walk through it. Let's do it. First thing is when I think about modern cloud development and I think about DevOps and I think about containers, it all comes down to agility. I believe teams are really trying to get agility, getting features and updates to their customers much, much faster. And things like Docker containers are really key to that because it gives you that ability to repeatedly, consistently build your application with its infrastructure, with its config, resembling the same infrastructure that's going to run on in the later stages like production. That is absolutely huge. Um, and it lends itself to being automated, right? Because the more we repeat the same thing, the less mistakes we can make in that spot, the faster we can make that. Um, and we can focus on what we care about more. And the second part of Agility to me is literally the time it takes, not just to build an application, but also to literally run it at runtime. Um, when we start thinking about the cloud, cloud environments, you know, services and applications, they come and they go very rapidly, right? So if a service is unhealthy, unhealthy, it gets clobbered and another one is already to come up in its place and take the traffic and take the load. Or maybe we want to scale from two instances to a thousand, right? And we need that to be incredibly fast. Um, and then we want to scale back so that we're efficient on cost. So it's very elastic, it's very rapid. And that's the other part of agility that um, I really look forward to when I think about containers. And so that sets up the stage. I think better than talking about it, I'd like to show you how some of the agility um, really plays out. So let's take a look. We're going to pop over to some demos. And the first thing I want to show you, um, let's look at Python, because I think Python is ultra cool programming language. Um, stacks like Django and Flask make it incredible to work on web apps or on data science workloads. Um, students are learning it. Just just a, what an awesome thing. So let's look at taking a very simple sample, you know, Python app and just do the hello world. Let's just get it going um, in containers. And then we're going to take things like that through the paces and take it all the way to the cloud. All right. So here um, I have the Django app. Let's go ahead and clone it. I'm going to, um, this is really fun. I'm going to use the new Windows terminal app. Let's see. Um, yeah, OK. 
get clone right on the fly. All right. And let's just open this in VS Code because it is a code-based thing. Um, so VS Code, um, it's free. Um, it gives you great edit editing capabilities on a number of languages, you know, whether it's Node, JavaScript, .NET, um, Java, and Python. And so we have a number of native editing experiences. And I could build, I could run, I could debug this on my machine. But as we know, um, applications like this one, they still come with dependencies. You know, I need Django. Um, I need a runtime environment. I need frameworks. There's other dependencies I probably need. I'm seeing SQLite here. Hmm, I don't have that installed. And, you know, this is my home machine, right? We're, a lot of us are working from home. This machine is my lifeline. I don't want to install something that I'm going to regret and then go into troubleshooting mode on my PC. So enter kind of great use case for Docker because I can express all the dependencies this app needs. Um, I can define using a Docker file what that infrastructure is and simply pull X copy that environment down and run it. And as long as I have Docker desktop, that's all I need to run all these different kinds of environments. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna use um, Control Shift P and let's add Docker files to workspace. And we'll pick Python Django. Um, we don't need Compose yet. This is a simple, simple single service. And here's the entry point to the app that's standard for Python. And it's also standard for a Python web app to start on 8000. So VS Code picked some good defaults, and um, I get a Docker file. And really, that's all. There's, there's really no magic to this. We just added a Docker file. And the Docker file is going to express the dependencies and the infrastructure and the config that this app will use. Um, and we can build that environment into a you know, immutable kind of binary, right? That's the goal, that'll be our Docker image. So here I can see that I'm getting a Python image that's slim for the particular version. Um, we're gonna expose the host port of 8,000, set some environment variables. Um, this is cool, we automatically deduce that you have a requirements.txt and we're going to use the pip, you know, the Python installer for packages. Um, and then we're gonna bring in your bits from your source code make sure the user is set up, and then finally run Unicorn as the um, environment, kind of the server, to run this workload. Um, so the long and the short of it is the Docker files figuring out all that infrastructure. And then what I could simply do is in favorite terminal using Docker Desktop, Docker CLI, I can run, I could Docker build and Docker run this. And VS Code just makes it easy uh, to do that for me, right? So I can build an image. I can see it's pulling, if it needed to, the Python, adding every step as a layer. Um, and then it's finally set up. All right, and now that this uh, guy's built, I have built a Docker image. So I could say Docker images. And I have a Docker image um, that is this currency that I can now deploy literally out to any machine. And then I can do a run on that machine. As long as it has Docker, I can run it. It could be VMs, it could be the cloud, it could be Kubernetes, it could be on-prem, hybrid, all those different kinds of setups. And certainly this desktop. And the Docker um, tools in Visual Studio Code help me visualize this as well. If I, um, I don't even have to know the command line commands. I can see that, you know, latest has been deployed. Um, I can see dependencies like networks and volumes that have been added and I can view logs and things like that. So, you know, very simply, we built this um, container image for Python. Now let's switch gears. Let's try another language. Let's do Java, because Java is also extremely common. And um, in this case, if, if any of you like games, especially um, games that are a little nostalgic, I love Settlers. I love Settlers of Catan. And um, there's a great community that um, that built a source code project for this. And I will bring it up for you. Let's 
So I've gone ahead and I've I've cloned this because I actually want to make some contributions. Um, I have a PR that I'm working on, um, and I'm learning some things. I'm going, but but at the end of the day, this is you know a three tier application. There's a, a middle tier tier server that is the Catan server that orchestrates players and games and and things like that. Listens on a TCP port. There's a back end database which could be SQLite. Um, in this case, I use Maria. DB, a version of MySQL. And then there's a front end, which is a Java client app written on AWT. Um, so, you know, my goal here is to get this all, you know, that app with all of its dependencies um, running in a container, and then I could run it anywhere, right? I could run it on this machine, I could run it on Raspberry Pi, and I can run it in the cloud. So that seems like a good thing to do. So, um, so what I've done is I've taken this source code and same step, added a Docker file. Um, this time I'm going to use um, an adopt open JDK base, uh, which is an open source JDK for Java. Um, same idea, ports, environment variables, directories. And in this case, I'm pulling in some dependencies, which are jar files and copying them in. And in the end, I'm just going to run the jar file as my app inside the container. So in this case, um, you know, same thing. I can build the image. And all that's really doing is just the command line for Docker build with a name. Um, and I love this. We have done this super early in the partnership. Our tools directly call the CLI, so it's completely transparent what we're doing. You can learn it, you can customize it. Um, no funny stuff, right? So now that we've done the build, um, I can do a run. And that one's in my registry. So let's just try this local one. All right, and that's running. Let's go pop over to the tool window. I can see that that container's running. Um, and let's even like look at the logs. Oh, that's super cool. Some robot players. There's actually some AI in this game. Um, I can't take credit for it. It's super cool. And the robots are ready to play um, in a true multiplayer game. And so um, already I'm feeling pretty good. I've got this built as a container. could run on any machine that just has Docker. Um, pretty awesome. Um, so now that we've got this running as a container, I want to think about what's the path to getting this into the cloud. Um, one thing I want to do is just make sure that I put the, um, the Docker build image somewhere that any, any place in the cloud can get at. So I want to use a registry. And VS Code makes this really easy because we understand both Azure Container Registry and Docker Hub. Um, today I'm going to focus on Docker Hub. Um, Docker Hub School has public registries, private registries, and it has some capabilities around team that you've been seeing today, right? And so um, what I want to do is I want to take this, um, I want to take this J Settlers image that I built, and I want to push it to Docker Hub. So pick Docker Hub. I have a namespace that I've already created. And I made a private registry. And just for a second, I think private registry is a really good idea, especially if um, you're working on software as a service or if you work at a company, because um, it, it gives your developers a chance to certify and bless the images, run virus um, scans, do compliance checks, do all of those things before simply kind of running them on your servers. So I think it's a best practice to still work with a private registry. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, so now I'm going to push that to the cloud accessible Docker Hub in the cloud. And as you saw this morning, I'm going to reiterate it here, um, jointly between Azure and Microsoft and Docker, we created just a really easy path, finally, <laughs> to get your containers um, into the cloud using Azure. So we're going to use a new, uh, newer service in the Azure family. It's called Azure Container Instances. And Azure Container Instances are perfect for simple, think single container services that need you know all the features of containers. Um, it's the easiest way to get those containers running in the cloud on Azure. 
Um, great for single services, even a few related services. Think about your database, maybe a logging sidecar. Um, that's totally fine. It's these cases that are simple and you don't really need that orchestration. Once you do need orchestration, you know, I would look at Azure Kubernetes service, um, something that can handle that orchestration. But for now, let's, let's focus on that simple path. Um, so when I want to use Azure, um, I can use another great feature that's built into Docker Desktop called Docker Context. Um, and by the way, we added a tool window to see here. Docker Context lets me you know, shift from the default context, which is this Docker host on my local machine, and I can set that context to any other Docker host. Right now, I can see my team shares a context on a VM in Azure called the QA context, right? And um, that's super handy. So as an individual, I have environments, and as a team, I have environments. And what I want to do is I want to make, actually, um, environments that map to the software development lifecycle I'm going to go through. I want just a, a space in the cloud for my development. I want a place to test. And then I want a place for prod. All right, now for my most favorite part of the whole entire thing. This is what we've been waiting for. I'm going to simply Docker run in this new context, in the context of my Azure environment. So first, let's create a context. You can see we can create that ACI context. So we'll say ACI create. And we'll give this a name. How about Sellers dev. It's going to be my dev environment. All right, I get this nice terminal UI. I'm going to pick my Azure subscription. I see my resource groups. Again, those are like namespaces. They're like containers. So I created one uh, right here in the West US for DockerCon. Boom, that's it. And now I've created Settlers Dev. I see it right here, right in the tooling. Um, also, for completeness, let's create another one for QA. So when I progress it past Dev, it'll go to QA. So again, we'll pick Azure. In this case, I want my QA in a different resource group, since there might be different permissions, different users, different things like that. So we'll create a new resource group. Boom, that's already created too. And now let's go ahead and use this new context. So Docker context use, settlers dev. Um, really cool thing is the tooling is actually keeping up with that. And we can see the context is already set. I could even have done a use through the UI. All right, now that we're using this context that's in Azure Container Instances, all my Docker commands are in the context of ACI. So let's just take a look what process they're running. Okay, as expected, there's nothing running. So let's um, go ahead and run our container in here. So we're going to do a docker run. And then I want to go back to, remember, we had this um, container image in our registry. That's right here, jsellers2 latest. So we'll just punch that in. So Paul Yuck in Docker Hub, um, jsellers2, the latest tag. And you know this can take a minute or two because it's for the first time setting up networking, setting up my container instance. Um, it's not just the Docker run, there's more to it. We're getting the infrastructure reserved, but still actually pretty quick given all the steps that it does. All right, we're successfully deployed. That's awesome. It's in Azure. So let's go look at it from an Azure perspective. I'm gonna bring up an Azure portal, so we can all look at that. All right, we'll look at the resource groups, and we have the DockerCon resource group, and here's a nice new instance waiting for us. We can see it's running, it's healthy, and I didn't set a port. No problem. Come back here. We'll remember to expose public published port of 880, and we'll rerun it. All right, it's successfully deployed. This time published to the public port that I want. Peek in the portal. Let's do a refresh. Okay, 
Okay. And remember, Docker containers are mutable, so I got a new container. That's expected. And here's the IP, and it's publicly exposed. So my callers can simply call it. Also, I can see the container is healthy. I can look straight at the logs, and whoa, we've got a robots running inside of Azure. How cool is that? So it's in the public cloud, it's on the internet. And you can see, um, basically in three command line steps, we're able to take any container that we can pretty much think about on the planet and push it into Azure. Um, I, I would highly recommend this for dev test. I think for prod, um, I'm going to recommend that you at least consider taking the approach of using a CI CD pipeline. And um, I think I have a great example of that. So I have another repo that I'll bring over. This one is showing you how to take a, a .NET app that we have called uh, Blazing Pizza. Uh, Glenn rewrote it. My colleague Glenn rewrote his microservices, and then I helped him with the DevOps side, and I built some containers. And um, we then added a GitHub action, which basically lets me do a CI CD pipeline. And when any code is checked in for web, the menu, or orders, um, that's going to trigger the Docker build and the, um, the Docker run inside of Kubernetes. Right? So if I can look at one of these. There's a build action. Um, and if we take a closer look, so I can see that there's a build job, right? And this is doing what actually we already know how to do. We do a build, we do a push to a registry. In this case, it's Azure Container Registry. Um, and then in Kubernetes, Kubernetes can pull that image and basically run it through um, either a Helm or a Kubernetes action to run it. So, you know, again, this is reinforcing that um, between developers and ops, a, a container is really a unit of currency that, you know, if developers just focus on source code, maybe containers, you can put that in a pipeline and then really deploy this into any Docker enabled environment. And that's one of the amazing powers of this. Looking at even how the desktop itself has gotten better. So we've got all the way to the cloud. Now we're coming back to local. But let's just take a peek at that. Um, there's some unsung heroes here that I haven't really spoken about yet. So I'm going to bring up Windows Terminal. And by the way, this is in Windows Store. This is awesome. Um, just go grab it. Um, what I can see here is, like if, I, if I clear the screen a little bit, um, I'm running WSL, or Windows Subsystem Linux, and that's running real honest-to-goodness Linux on top of Windows without all the emulation layers and thunking of file systems and networking. It's just honest-to-goodness Linux running fast on my Windows machine. Um, that is awesome, in my opinion. And I can see here that I have an interactive Ubuntu that I downloaded from the store, and Docker Desktop my newer version now natively understands WSL2, and it just makes it fast, and it makes it high fidelity with a real version of Linux. Um, so I'm completely stoked about that. Um, to get WSL2, it's really easy. You just go to the URL, aka.ms, WSL2 will run you through the instructions, but just to demystify it, um, if I went to settings and windows, updates and security, just make sure you're in the Windows Insider program I picked the release preview. Um, that one's not too crazy, and uh, it gives you pretty stable pre-releases. And then this got pulled just actually last night. Um, so I went to the new version of Windows 10. You know, friendly name is like the 2004 feature update, and I believe that's going to give you the 19,041 build number of Windows. And just to keep me honest. Go to system information, yep, and there it is, 19,041. Um, that's what you want. I wanted to just finalize showing off how that can come together in Visual Studio, um, which in some ways is home for me, and it's great for .NET, .NET Core. So I'll open this, create a new project. Let's do a console app in C-sharp using .NET Core. Um, .NET Core can run on Linux and Windows and Mac. It's totally cross-platform. 
All right, so I've got my nice editor up here. And just for illustration, we're going to get the OS name uh, from the runtime information. And we'll print that in our little hello world. freeze in the console with a read line. All right, and even just for good measure, we can set a breakpoint. So the very first thing I'll point out when we're running this .NET Core app, it's running to the metal. It's going to run directly on the .NET runtime we have called Kestrel. So if I run this, what I expect to happen is it'll say, hey, I'm running on Windows because I'm running on Windows. Um, and we will unbreak. Hello, my environment is Microsoft Windows 19,041. Perfect, just what I expect. Um, but I know that you know I probably want to run this on Linux because that's what my ops team's decided and I need some dependencies thrown in. So again, we're back into the mode where using Docker containers would be totally advantageous. So using these tools, kind of the same idea, I can add the Docker files. Uh, I'm gonna choose Linux, but I had the choice of Windows, which is cool. And main thing is it's gonna add a Docker file. In this case, I can run this in Docker, or I can run it back on Kestrel. I can go back and forth all day long. So I'll run it in Docker. And hitting a breakpoint even inside of Docker, so that's pretty sweet. I've got Docker debugging. And I can see here I'm running now on honest to goodness Linux on my Windows machine using WSL2, using Docker Desktop. It's all coming together incredibly fast, um, exactly what I wanted. So I'm pretty excited about that. And also I have things like the container tool window in Visual Studio that make diagnosing really easy. So I can see the containers, I can inspect the environment supports without having to know the Docker inspect um, commands, get my logs, um, and this one I'm really excited about. If you want to know actually what was laid down inside the image, like, hey, did my SQL scripts get laid down? Did my content files get laid down? I can inspect this right here. Um, incredibly helpful. So, and to recap, there are a number of things that we saw today. I will summarize it as we had a ton of choice. We could use our favorite language and stack. We could use Linux or Windows. Um, we made it really easy to connect it to Azure and Azure Container instances using the new Docker context commands. Um, and that functionality will be available to you very soon. And we use Docker Hub so that with my identity, I could find those runtime contexts that were associated with my work. Incredibly powerful as an individual and as a team. And the tooling, boy, that, that made it easy to discover and learn the Docker commands to do things like build and run and push to the registry and deploy. And then we got the runtime benefits of running on WSL2. Um, and as on the journey to prod, we saw how GitHub Actions helped. So to summarize, you know, my opinion my belief is that containers are the most useful for developers helping with agility. Um, we saw the optimized desktop really of the future, but it's today, right? With Docker Desktop, WSL2 from Windows, VS Code, which is our tooling, Azure with its container instances and GitHub Actions just coming together, just meant to be peanut butter and jelly. And um, Azure Container Instances, I'm really excited about that too because it's it's a simpler entry point into Azure that is natively optimized for containers. Um, so it's just a great first step and it's great even as a last step for, for simpler workloads. All the source code you saw today is here, um, every tool you saw today is here. So please call to action, go try this stuff, let us know what you think. All the tooling's out in the open. Um, you, know, you can file GitHub issues, we wanna hear from you. So thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to see what you do with this.